Question number three states, you, <clears throat> you decided to run for public office. Although you have little to no experience with elections, holding office, or campaigning, you feel you can be successful since you helped a friend who served in public office uh, in a public office seat last term. Explain how this is a characteristic of Weber's ideal bureaucracy and what you will do to provide or to prove your competence under these characteristics. So there are a few competencies um, within Weber's ideal bureaucracy. And I don't think that this is a clear-cut example of just one. I think this is um, a combination of them. And, well, you know, it takes in part of each one in order to make a complete uh, example of why he would be a good leader. Um, so I'd start with, we're just going to work our way down. Number two of the characteristic all offices are organized in a hierarchy of authority. It takes the shape of a pyramid. Officials are held accountable to their superiors for their subordinates, actions, and the decisions um, in addition to their own. So this, I see this applying here, is that when an individual takes on somebody, even in a helping capacity, they have... Uh, place a vested interest in their success or failure um, within their organization. When you look at the congressmen and senators, it's not just them. They have um, interns, and then they have staffers, and then junior congressmen that work underneath them within their own state, and then, then you know, the senior, senior congressmen. Um, and having... Uh, somebody allow you to assist in their campaign, um, as in number two states, is uh, that previous office holder staked his reputation on the abilities of of uh, myself if I was the one running. Um, number three, which is the all activities are governed by a consistent system of abstract rules and regulations that define the responsibilities of the various offices and the relationship amongst them. They ensure the coordination of essential tasks and uniformity in performance regardless of changes in personnel. This is a big one in that um, while this guy, or while I, if I'm the one hypothetically running, I can't stand back and say, I have done this before. I've been a, in office before. I can step back and say, I have worked in the office before. I know the hierarchy. I know what tasks each person has to perform. And I understand um, how all the pieces within the office are supposed to function in order to main, you know, create a proper machine. And in, this, in that scenario, I have experience. Because while I wasn't on the top, I was able to watch the person on the top. Number four. All offices carry with them qualifications and are filled on the basis of technical competence, not personal considerations. Presumably trained individuals do better work than those who gain an office on the basis of family ties, personal friendships, or political favors. So this one goes back to that first example I gave. Um, most places, uh, most colleges don't have a how to be a congressman course. It is, um, a lot of it's, you know, experience-based, which is why if you want to get into the political arena, the first step is unpaid intern, then a paid intern, you know, and then you just got to work your way up. So, with me hypothetically running for office, it doesn't say if I was a you know, paid intern or unpaid intern or a staffer, it just says I helped a friend, um, which, you know, it, it's pretty vague. It, it could be, you know, mom and pop over here, you know, a tiny little town. In which case, there really isn't a whole lot of, um, you know, grandeur in helping a friend. But it still is experience. Everybody's got to learn somewhere. And, uh, you know, in the military... They send you to basic training. They send you to AIT, the advanced individual training. And when you get to your unit, they say, hope you forgot all that stuff because we're going to teach you the right way to do it. And, I mean, you can go to all school in the world, the real world examples 
is where you learn. And myself, before running for this office, I had a, you know, a good real world teaching working for somebody else. The last um, char characteristic I would look at is number seven, is that administrative decisions, uh, rules, procedures, and activities are recorded in written documents and preserved in permanent files. Now, the question states that I helped a friend, but it doesn't really give me an official role. Now, if all my assistance was just, you know, bringing coffee, nothing doing. There's no real anything to fall back on. But if I'm actually working for him, helping him achieve a better society, my efforts will be recorded. I don't, I don't have to step up on a podium and address a crowd and say, well, I helped him out. I would be able to point to um, specific recorded instances of uh, things I've done, uh, emissions and goals accomplished, uh, you know, uh, tasks and services performed, and, you know, the length of the service, which is another one. I mean, some people say they helped a friend, you know, in office, and it could be like the last week and a half, or it could be the entire tenure of a decade. And having this, you know, piece number seven, the written record of actions and decisions, and that is, you know, rather imperative. That's one of the great signifying factors that you have performed at that level, although while not recognized, and you can continue to perform or even, you know, excel beyond if you were to be elected. And that is all the ways that the ideal bureaucracy would fit in. Thank you.